Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let us recapitulate what we have learnt in the last lecture. We have basically looked at the meaning of the thermodynamics and later on we looked at the historical perspective of the thermodynamic, how the thermodynamic was evolved as a mature subject and its application we have looked at some of them which are quite magnanimous. It encompasses all the branches of science and engineering. So, therefore, it is a very important subject which I urge upon you people to take it seriously and study it and apply it to your professional and personal life. And today we will be discussing about uh, various aspects of the thermodynamic, basically, the initial con concepts. And before starting this lecture, let us look at this statement by Max Planck, who says that we have no right to assume that any physical laws exist or if they have existed up to now that they will continue to exist in a similar manner. That means, he is challenging to you people to challenge the existing laws and find out what it is or you know what you call limitation, so that you, you can find out better laws of the nature or the <coughs> physical world. So, uh, when we talk about this thermodynamics, we are basically looking at the energy and in interaction with the matter that means, we will be you know looking at the matter and we use basically two approaches, one is macroscopic approaches, other is microscopic approaches. And what is the meaning of this macroscopic approach? In the thermodynamic, we will be using both approaches, right? one is macroscopic approach and other is microscopic. For example, like if I take a cylinder here, right? if you look at this cylinder, we are taking and it will be containing certain amount of gas, right. If you look at this gas and if this cylinder, can anybody look at this cylinder and tell whether it is uh, you know contains oxygen, whether it contains air or whether it is contains some other gas, can anybody tell me. Actually, as an engineer, you should know the color code, right. If you look at this, the lower portion is which one? Black color, the upper portion is white color. Can you see, right? And from the color, and if you know the code, then you can say what it contains, right. Of course, uh, that one has to look at. I will urge upon you people to look at the color code of the gases. As an engineer, you must know whatever the engineer you may be, if you are in a sub floor on the plant, you need to know that. So, this basically contains the air, of course, the color code will be different for different countries, but nowadays it is what you call homogenizing and we do follow international standard and this basically is a black and white color, if it is, then it is having, it is basically air. So, when you look at this uh, kind of a you know a circular uh, cylinder which contains certain amount of air and air means it will be mostly the oxygen and nitrogen of course there will be several other gases will be there which you are very less percentage you know then we are not bother about it and these are the two gases which will be at higher pressure because it is a pressure cylinder right and when you talk about it, 
what is happening to the molecule. Let us say two molecules are there oxygen and nitrogen for the simplicity we are assuming air consists of oxygen nitrogen and they will be moving around right, they will be colliding, they will be you know interacting with them and then if we look at those things we call it as a basically microscopic approach because each molecule has to be tracked out. But in uh, engineering sense you know we will not be looking at that, we will be looking at grossly that means if the you know what is happening to the pressure. Uh, for example, if you look at this cylinder is having a some gauge is there, this gauge are there and this is known as pressure regulating valve. Now, what are the kinds of valve, pressure regulating valve will be there right, how we can regulate the pressure is a question. On the cylinder one has to regulate the pressure otherwise you will be in deep trouble am I right. If without this without pressure regulator if I use what will happen there will be some accident if we handle the high pressure gas cylinder without a pressure regulator accident will occur right. So, one has to be careful and if you look at the gauge this gauge is basically pressure gauge and by that we can measure the pressure. And the pressure if you look at is manifested due to the what change of momentum by the molecules on a particular surface right. And we can also the measure temperature and uh, pressure we can also the measure the volume and these are basically properties of the space average property that means is average right. We are not bothered about individual molecule you know interaction with that and this properties when you look at in a macroscopic way or in a uh, what you call grass way we call it as a, a microscopic property. And it, it basically talk about the average properties you know it is not changing with respect to you know time of course, one can measure the pressure and temperature with respect to time, but uh, in this example we are saying what it would be right. And this is the average species. Now, why you will be looking at microscopic properties? In our uh, this course, will be mostly dealing with the microscopic uh, approach to analyze the problems because that will be easier. And no need to consider the structure of motion. There will be molecules. You know what is the structure? Whether it's bimolecular, dimolecular, or trimolecular? Whether it is interacting, right? What is the extent of molecular activity? We are not bothered. We are bothered with the gross effect, what is the effect right. For example, if I look at your face and you are looking good you know or you are, um, you are very satisfied or you are attentive, but in your mind there might be several things which are going on which I am not aware right. So, when I am looking at gross then it is basically gross properties I am trying to observe on your face or on your activities right, but in your mind what is happening that is the basically microscopic approach. So, now if you look at few variables are required to describe the you know if you look at the system or whatever it is. So, you can very few properties you can use it and variables are easily measurable these are you can measure pressure, temperature, volume these are the things or other properties you can measure. So, therefore, you know we will be dealing with this macroscopic approach to analyze the thermodynamic problems and this thermodynamics is known as classical thermodynamics. So, in this course we will be basically dealing with classical thermodynamics where we will be looking at macroscopic you know properties or the macroscopic approach will be utilized to analyze the problem. Just to give you a glimpses of what is the meaning of uh, microscopic you know approach let me just that we can take this same cylinder contains large number of molecules as I told like it can be you know in case of air it is oxygen nitrogen, but it can be several other molecules you know kinds of molecules and which will be random motion right. It will be all the time moving and 
it will be have their own velocities because it will be colliding and then velocities may be you know changing of the each individual molecule not all molecule will be having same velocities right it will be changing and as a result what will happen like we need to look at for example if i take a small slice from the cylinder 1 centimeter cube so if you look at how much particle it will be there it will be having something 10 power to 20 particles means molecules you can say right particles means you know you can think of molecules and these are very big numbers right now i want to look at each individual particle how they are doing so what will happen the state of particle can be specified by the coordinate system if you look at the coordinate system right if i take this as if it is this is your what you call x and it is having i i can say right and this is your y and perpendicular to this you know is your z so now the coordinate system has to be and each molecule this is fixed and then your each molecule will be moving around right if it is having a molecule let's say here right it is having a velocities in the x direction right v x or it can be v y and it can be v z direction right and when it is having then you will have to look at the also momentum how it is right the momentum can be m b i m b j and m b k right you need vectors i j k and it can be change in the momentum you will be talking about and other things so if you look at number of you know variables will be enormous and if you want to solve this equation of motion and then finding out interaction all those things it will be enormous even the best computer cannot solve this and finding out its effect right now how to deal with it even if a, even if i'll take a 1 centimeter cube as a, this thing and look at and if it is a cylinder if it is a you know let's say sun if i look at the sun lot of molecules will be there you know like lot of nuclear uh, what you call fusion reaction will be going on and then other things how will I analyze are you getting so therefore even small systems it is very difficult to look at take care of each one track of all those things and then look at what will be its effect for example India is a populous country 130 crore people if I look at each individual what is doing how it is doing what are the moving how it is interacting with each other you know one will go mad <laughs> similarly when you talk about these molecules are moving with a you know a certain velocities interacting with each other and then keep track of them and what is happening what are the changes occurring it is quite difficult and enormous even the best computer cannot really compute within the enormous computational power now how to deal with that is there any other way of looking at in a molecular level interactions and extent of molecular activities is it possible there comes to the picture here what you call the tool what we call statistical tool right so uh, you know we it being used and such an approach where you will be able to look at the microscopic effects like each individual particle or the molecules even sometimes if it is you know other things like atoms then you will be uh, basically known as the microscopic apparatus as i told that state of gas which changes continuously because all the time with the time you know it will be changing each molecule will be interacting with other molecules and then we use you know uh, tools known as statistical tools to deduce this average properties which we will be more interested in right so therefore statistics comes into picture and this thermodynamic is known as the statistical thermodynamic and microscopic means it will be dealing with uh, you know with the matter at a molecular level so in this case large number of variable to specify state of the matter and the variables cannot be measured easily if you look at if i want to look at a molecule and it is interacting what is the mass and what is the velocity is very difficult to measure you know it's not really and it is impossible 
to tackle even a simple system. And therefore, you know we use the statistical tool and the thermodynamic related to you know uh, that thermodynamic that uses the statistical tool which is known as the statistical thermodynamic which is the beyond the scope of present course we will be not dealing with. Maybe you people are interested in that you can take in other courses in our institute maybe in the department of physics and chem chemical engineering they do offer. <coughs> so, uh, however, sometimes I will be uh, you know looking at little uh, give you a flavor of the uh, you know microscopic approach whatever we are discussing about that not uh, maybe in on some, some occasion. Now, whenever we are looking at this physical properties right we need to look at the uh, you know its dimension because the physical quantities right will be uh, characterized by the dimensions. Uh, what do you mean by these dimensions? Any idea? Any idea? What do you mean by dimensions? Because if there is a physical quantity, then we will have to assign something like to the mind. For example, you say the uh, you know length, for the length we will have to say it is a meter right or a time for the second like that. And if you look at this physical quantity can be you know into two categories one is primary quantities like a length, mass, time, temperatures and similarly like you can have a certain derived quantities like your velocity, acceleration right. Like velocity is basically change in uh, displacement with respect time and then uh, A is your uh, acceleration change in velocity with respect to uh, time and force and then pressure force per unit area and other things like energy and other things. So, whenever this arbitrary magnitude you know being assigned to this dimension we get the units. So, uh, for a example earlier days people are using this British system that is the feet right pound and second degree Fahrenheit which are quite clumsy you know because it is not really uh, very good. For example, if you look at the foot it will be something uh, you know uh, third, uh, 1 feet is equal to 30 inches and inches again you know will be uh, little difficult to soothe and other things there is several earlier days in our country also we are using BD system. But later on uh, we found that uh, which is uh, quite uh, you know congruent with the decimal system that is the uh, SI system or MK system. So, uh, that is being used metric system in the metric system that is called you know like uh, MK system that is uh, meter, kg and second right in CGS system we call centimeter, gram and second kind of things. And this is being uh, used very much of course, if you go to uh, our market or something people are still using the British system although it is to use. <coughs> and uh, international level we use the uh, SI system basically it is the international systems and we are being we will be using uh, in this course uh, SI system but sometimes some problem may be given in other units so that you know the unit conversion kind of things. So, in SI system we call it is basically meter, kg, second and Kelvin kind of things. So, if you look at the international standard being used for mass, length and time and uh, temperature. So, these are the standard which are being used uh, for example, like basic SI units. Uh, for mass is kilogram and a standard alloy block of platinum iridium maintained at IVWM. This is a international bureau of weight and measure and Severus in Paris, Paris. It is being kept because platinum iridium kept so that it would not change with respect to time. It is a very uh, metal uh, like which would not be corroded and eroded. Similarly, uh, earlier days people were keeping the metal uh, length and then they are saying this is 1 meter, but nowadays it has been changed people are saying length of basic SI unit 
is a meter which is equal to the length of uh, something 16 lakh 50076.73 wavelength of Krypton 86 radi radiation corresponding to tra transition between 2P 10 and 5D in vacuum. So, this is a more precisely you know one can think of because this is the standard which is being utilized for making it you know uh, being utilized otherwise if the standard you know primary calibration or you just calibrate all the thing with that that should be as accurate as possible. Uh, some of you who will be uh, you know conducting experiment or thing and the calibration is a very important because which is the baseline the baseline is very important and that should be as accurate as possible. So, uh, similarly if you look at SI unit uh, for the time denoted as second in duration of this big number like 91926317770 periods of a radiation of 2 hyperfine levels of down state of CGM 133 atom I am not expecting you will remember, but you should aware that what is the preciseness of this because this is the baseline right. So, uh, and temperature of course, uh, uh, in the same time uh, people are using the triple point of water in um, uh, that is in Kelvin is uh, basically expressed in Kelvin and taken as 1 over 273.16 of the triple point of water right. Earlier days you know we will be discussing as we go along that people were using basically the steam point and ice point as the reference, but now the triple point is being accepted worldwide <coughs> because of its preciseness. So, uh, if you look at we will be using uh, you know various quantities system international uh, like of course, 96 they have adopted and we will be using the acceleration is as I told uh, the uh, velocity sorry uh, acceleration. Uh, is basically change in the velocity this with time this meter per second square and the force is the basically uh, f is equal to m a kg per meter second square Newton. See Newton is the name therefore, we will be using is as a capital N not a small n right any name you know uh, whatever we use we use always capital right <coughs> that is the unit uh, symbol we will be using and the pressure if you look at the pressure by definition force per unit area and the unit of stress also is same as that of the pressure because this is the normal stress one can think of and it is ascribed with the Pascal therefore, we call P A P is the capital A is small and work or the energy is basically assigned with the unit kg meter square per second because the force right and uh, and uh, length this is a meter square by second square right. <coughs> and it is a uh, you can think of using basically the Newton and meter because kg meter second square is nothing, but your Newton right and second that is a meter and that is basically joule is a, uh, being used and this is a j and power is the uh, rate of change of work and which is nothing, but a uh, what you call the work per unit sec time and this we call it is a Newton meter that is a work per second is a watt. So, you will be using this symbol basically as a capital be careful because people do you know fuss about it if you are not writing it properly. <coughs> so, I will just give you small tips uh, like how to use this thing uh, in your convention for uh, using the units. Uh, whenever the any unit right is after the scientist name for example, joules, watt, pascals, newtons and uh, you know other things coulomb right this will be with capital letter ok. And uh, for example, 10 newton 1000 pascals right it will be p will be capital pascal and a will be small and all others are in small letters for example, 10 kg and 20 meter per second right ok. And if I will say it is kilometer what it will be it will be also small letter, but if you go to your highway sometimes people write in capital am I right did you observe that thing whenever you are moving in this uh, looking at the sign board 
you will find in some places it is written in capital letter, am I right? Particularly you can see the Lucknow and the Kanpur uh, uh, highway, right? You, you did not observe, you could have observed, just observe that, you know it is not right. So, uh, and we will have to be little careful about when you say Newton meters, there should be a gap right here and if it is milli Newtons, we will have to say m and n, there is no gap. So, you will have to distinguish between the, this thing and for example, you write, you want to write 10 Newton or 100 Newton, do not write Newtons, you write new, 100 Newton or 10 Newton, the plural one should not use and one prefix should be used, for example, milligram right mg is basically milligram right or kilojoule k should be small and j should be capital but a lot of people have seen they write uh, either uh, you know like uh, k is capital j is capital or k is small j is small am i right i have seen and uh, let's say mw what is the unit mw megawatt right but I can write, can I write down kilo joule k k j, can I write? I cannot, okay. so only one prefix should be used. So, no space between uh, you know prefix and units, for example, if I say 5 into 10 power to minus 3 Newton is equal to 5 milli Newton, you should not write 5 m, there is a blank and then Newton, one should not write that way. So, one has to be careful and also develop and uh, have it, so that you would not make mistake in writing, right. And no full stop should be placed at its end, right. And you might have seen people are writing you know 120 k dot and m dot, that means 120 kilometer on the sign board, which is not right. And they will be writing in capital also, that is also not right. So, uh, one has to be careful about uh, assigning the units to the your this thing. So, let us take an example, which uh, I have taken a very simple example. Uh, a tank of 2 meter cube volume is filled with kerosene of density 850 kg per meter cube. Determine the amount of mass m in the tank. So, you will have to do that, what you will have to do is very simple, right. You are given density, you are given the volume. So, basically the density is equal to m by v and you will find out mass is equal to rho into v and you just uh, plug in the numbers and you will get and if you look at unit wise that uh, left hand side here mass is kg and density is kg per meter cube and volume meter cube. So, cancel it out is kg right and if you put these values you will get this number this is very simple one. What it indicates you might be thinking why I am showing this simple example, what is indicating? What it is? This example what you have learned? It is a very simple you know like uh, you use a formula and plug in number you will get. It says that left hand side unit is same as the right hand side unit what we call dimensional homogeneity. That means, a mathematical equation should be dimensionally homogeneous, am I right? That is the first you know uh, thing one has to check whether it is right or wrong. And that means, if it is dimensionally homogeneous, is it right? The equation need not to be right, okay. But that is the first condition is a mathematical formula must be dimensionally homogeneous, but dimensionally homogeneous mathematical relationship should uh, you know always not necessarily right, okay. It may be right, it may not be right. So, therefore, one has to be very careful. Interestingly, I must share with you in the uh, 
last semester I gave a, uh, an example to the student in the examination ok. And that subject was not covered, but I just gave so that he can use the dimensional homogeneity and answer the question. I will tell you that only maybe 10 percent people could answer that question and 95 percent could not answer and it was a very simple, <laughs> a simple as simple as this question right. So, therefore, I would suggest that be careful in the sense it is a tricky question not tricky it is just to recognize whether you know this or not and you may say look it is out of my course it is not <laughs> right it is a simple thing what you will have to require little presence of mind and which people did not do that I had experimented. So, therefore, you need not to think that why is you know like giving a simple example with this is a not only a simple example it is a very profound example for illustrating the dimensional homogeneous uh, homogeneity of the equation mathematical equation. Now, we will be looking at the definition and concepts of the thermodynamics which is very important why we need to look at definition and concepts because like every subject is having their own vocabulary you need to understand the uh, words or the vocabularies of a particular subject properly and precisely so that misunderstanding in that subject can be avoided therefore one has to look at the uh, you know definition and concepts and most of the things you will be aware in your plus 2 labels science but however, we will be again redoing it, so that it will be seep into your mind and so that you would not commit any mistake in doing that. So, therefore, you please uh, listen it carefully and also try to think about it what it is. So, when we talk about a thermodynamic we call it as a system. So, what do you mean by a system can anybody tell me? See as in the thermodynamic which will be looking at energy and its interaction right and means interaction with with a you know uh, with its surrounding one can think of right. Now, we need to define and also we will have to take uh, whenever there is a energy you know uh, exchange taking place there will be some change in the properties and that means it will be properties will be changed only through the what only through the matter then only you can think of we have already seen microscopic and macroscopic without matter can you think of you cannot think of a change in the state of a uh, you know any uh, interaction is taking place. So, therefore, so we can define a system as a quantity of matter or a region in space bounded by the close surface. For example, if I take this room, I want to find out the how much energy we are utilizing right and we will have to look at how many light points are there, whether it is coming let us say sun is falling on this room and some energy is entering into here and maybe there is a AC which will be you know on and how much cooling air it is giving. So, I need to find out for that what I will have to look at I will have to make this you know uh, in this room and then uh, as a system and then we will have to say that it will be reacting with the or interacting with the surrounding. So, if you look at everything external to the system is known as surrounding and system and surrounding together we call it as a what universe. So, if I look at a system here right and it is having a boundary and rest of the things will be surrounding and this total we call it as a universe. Let me you know take another example I am having a cup of coffee here right and now this temperature is higher cup of coffee when I say the temperature will be let us say higher hot coffee 
and it will be interacting with the surrounding. So, what will be the uh, is uh, is surrounding? What it will be? For example, if I take this, let us consider this is the cup, and it contains some amount of hot tea. Let's say, right? And now it will be interacting with the what you call with its surrounding. What will be surrounding? Huh? Suppose the temperature is there. Let's say I will keep this cup here on this. What will be its surrounding? The system I can take the whatever the hot tea is there. Let's say I'm saying this. You know I can take this as a system. My right. Or I can take the full cup as my system, right? I can. I'm having liberty to choose that. Now I'm interested to find out, like it will be interacting with surrounding. That means some heat will be transferred, right? Some heat will be transferred to its surrounding. What will be its surrounding? Suppose I am keep placing a, you know, what to call a, a cup, tea cup here. Can I say that the surrounding will be there, where you are sitting? Let's say maybe 10 meter from this, or can I talk about one meter? Can I talk about one meter? Is it possible? One meter from the cup? It cannot be. You are some of you are saying yes. No. Why? Because you cannot have any change. If I put a thermocouple, uh, sorry, thermometer. 1 meter from the hot tea, can it sense any temperature? It cannot. Am I right or wrong? So, it will be closer to that where there is a change, there is a heat transfer is taking place and if heat transfer is taking place, the temperature let us say this is something maybe uh, 50 degree Celsius and this is something 25 degree Celsius, right. If the change is occurring and then because of heat transfer nearby places, then only we will take its surrounding. So, if you look at my surrounding will be very closer to my hot cup, where the physical properties are changing due to the interaction of this uh, system, what we call it as a hot tea with its surrounding. Is that clear to you people? So, generally people say look this is my system and this is my surrounding, no wherever interaction taking place then only we call it as a system. So, as I told that boundary you know is a very important because that separates the system and surrounding. Now, how to choose the boundary is very important, it can be real, it can be imaginary right in nature and but how to choose which is the right boundary is very important point one has to look at because that will that boundary will be defining the system. So, as I told it can be fixed boundary, it can be rigid boundary, movable boundary right and it can be diathermal that means heat transfer can take place between the system and surrounding through the boundary right. For example, I, t I took that example of hard copy through the wall of the uh, what you call through the wall of this T cup then heat has to transfer right. And this boundary can I take that whatever the thickness of the uh, T cup can I take it as a boundary mathematically it is not right mathematically we take is a thin boundary right and if this heat will transfer through the boundary then we call it diathermal and there will be some boundary which won't allow the heat to transfer we call it as a adiabatic right most of the cases lay air conditioned room like this where the wall should act as an adiabatic wall so that heat will be not transfer through that otherwise you will have to pay penalty that you know like uh, because a lot of heat will be entering into the room and then the cooling load on the your air condition will be higher 
So, therefore, one has to insulate it properly. And if you look at uh, just to summarize the boundary can be fixed, it can be rigid, right? it can be movable. For example, I have already given you this example like you know system I can take this as a thing uh, as a wall of this room. If I take this room, I can take this room as that. That means, wherever you are having interaction right that you will take as a system and boundary and in the movable systems for example, this is a piston cylinder which you use very often like can you tell me where you use your piston cylinder right wherever you use you will be using in your day to day life am I right yes or no right. For example, nowadays water crisis across the country you do know you are aware we use the hand pump in the hand pump right it will be a piston and cylinder you do give you know inflate your uh, tire in your cycle by hand or by compressed air if you are giving by hand then it will be use, you will be using a air pump where the piston cylinder will be there am I right you must be riding your bike in bike piston cylinder arrangement will be there or not huh? yes or no where in your bike bike means automobiles right auto bike or your car your truck buses everywhere piston and cylinder arrangement will be there yes or no but you people are not saying anything right you will be using piston cylinder arrangement where the system you know we can consider this gas which is there in the piston cylinder let us say for example, and piston will be moving and as a result this boundary is moving right. And there might be some heat interaction between this system and its surrounding, surrounding will be nearby. So, we will be handling this kind of problems very often <coughs> and there is a uh, we call it as a closed system where no mass transfer will be taking place. That means, if I look at this boundary what is happening we take a you know a 1 kilo of mass and then we can give heat here right. What will happen to this mass? Mass will not change right. Okay. But however, there is a energy interaction for example, now you are having let us say 60 70 students are there all of you are having if I consider 70 students 70 mass you know like in this system if I look at you know like you people as a system I am interacting with you I am basically transferring certain kind of information to you. That means, there is an interaction if I take this as a system as a student as a all together a system that means, you are remaining here the mass is or the number of students are remain same. So, it is not changing, but the some of you will walk down then it is changing right this cannot be a closed system and there is a interaction. For example, you imagine the student will be coming and going out and the teacher is like you know it happens in your public space public speech or the wherever the you know uh, politician or some other things will be coming then you know people will be coming and going that is a what you call open system. So, where you know you can think, uh, think of a uh, what you call fixed boundary and there might be a closed system right where it is a uh, in this case it is a fixed boundary, but in this case it is a moving boundary is a piston cylinder and piston will be going up and it can become down whereas, the interaction will taking place and this is also known as a closed system because there is a energy interaction, but there is no mass change or the mass you know no mass transfer is taking place mass is remaining same. So, therefore, we call it as a closed system. Similarly, uh, let us look at an example here right. If you look at this is your beautiful earth where we live could you see how beautiful it is it is quite beautiful am I right. 
and now the heat is coming in from the solar we are getting lot of heat particularly now the summer you know we are getting lot of heat from the sun and it will be absorbed by this earth surface and so also by us by the trees and other things you know like and lot of heat also going out. Now, I want to analyze this thing what I will use can I use a control mass system or not yes or no see what happened these whites are what this white thing these are the atmosphere right around that where you know if it is a sea there will be some kind of a precipitation will be going on vaporization of water again condensation will be there cloud is coming and pouring water I mean like rain and there is a dust particulates it is moving out settling down right. Now, I want to analyze right depending on what you want to analyze we can choose the system because choosing a system is very important otherwise it will be very cumbersome it will be very difficult to analyze the problem how to fix the boundary where to boundary suppose I want to analyze only the what only the uh, energy interaction or the solar energy whatever is coming out and in then what I will do I can use as a control mass system. So, where I will put my boundary should I put here or should I put in this place where should I put my uh, what you call the system boundary such that I can use the control mass system where can anybody tell me is it atmosphere right ok. So, if I will put it here that means whatever changes is occurring here right I am not bothered it is coming and going. So, that but if I will put it here then it cannot be a closed system if I put my system boundary around the earth surface itself I cannot consider it as a, a closed mass system or a closed system or a control mass system I cannot it will be difficult because the mass is going and out and it will be interacting. So, therefore, one has to very carefully choose the system boundary identify the system what kind of analysis you will be doing you know based on the analysis being carried out. So, let us now look at <coughs> the open system open system both the energy and the mass will be what you call crossing the system boundary right. I uh, let us say you people in the winter might be using the geyser right for getting hot water in your hostels am I right. So, there there will be heating and then water will be flowing out and in and flowing out. So, then we can consider this as a flow system as I gave an example of this room that if the you know like a student will come and in going out then it will be like kind of a open system. So, if I look at that what is happening the solar radiation is coming and it is going out there is a precipitation you know then we will be consider this as a what you call a system as an open system right. For that I can take this as as a system boundary this as my system boundary so that what will happen like uh, it can be basically uh, what you call an open system because there is a precipitation going on and it is coming uh, going up and coming down kind of thing I can think of a a turbine you know which I have done in schematically that means some mass is entering and some mass is going out and pressure you know is with a certain pressure and it is expanded and you will get the work output and then you know we can consider it as a uh, open system and this we can take it as a system boundary which is uh, I mean uh, uh, basically the outer casing of the turbine. So, let us uh, consider a example because this is you know like if I consider 
this is a gas turbine engine which is quite complex in nature you know like what do we use for power generation we use for the also for uh, like your uh, jet engine applications kind of things to uh, provide the thrust to the aircraft and other vehicles. So, if you look at these are basically a compressor and there is a air intake and then what will happening the flow will be entering here and when it is entering you know like it will be pressure will be increasing and you will be giving some work through the shaft. So, I want to analyze this thing what I will have to do I will have to take a system boundary which is corresponding to this place right and then we will have to uh, look at how much work is coming in and what is the change in the uh, mass and change in the you know like your velocities and pressure and other things will have to change look at it and then find out how it is interacting. Similarly, combustion chamber will have to burn some fuel and we can take this as a system boundary and look at how much change in the temperature is occurring and you will have to look at. So, these complex systems can be you know <coughs> looked at in a total or you can take in individual components like in this case compressor, air intake and combustion chamber or a turbine or a nozzle right which is uh, right and each individual component you can take analyze or you can take the whole system and also analyze what is happening. So, depending on the things you can take and this is an example for the open system. So, when neither the mass nor the energy uh, are crossing the system boundary we call it an isolated system right that means what will be happening in isolated system is it having any applications you know there is no energy interaction there is no mass also you know a changing or it is not coming in anything that means there is no mass interaction as such right then we call it as an isolated system we will be using it sometime but under what condition we will use it any idea you know like people are isolated how suppose you will do some nuisance in the society you will be isolated put into a jail am I right or wrong. So, you are being isolated so it is a like isolated system where the interaction will be low and you will be and we will be using this whenever we will be talking about entropic calculation then we will be using that ok. So, and as I told uh, earlier I am also harping it again that particular type of system must be identified carefully for carrying out thermodynamic analysis otherwise you know your life will be miserable for analyzing that does not mean that I cannot use you know uh, a system for uh, to analyze for example, if I take a problem and uh, whether I will be taking uh, control mass or whether I will be taking control volume the open system is known as the control volume system also right. Uh, uh, whether it is possible or not in other words for example, I have taken the earth and its interaction with the solar energy right as a system I told that look you will have to take the control mass system little, uh, you know till the atmosphere exist earth atmosphere exist right as a system boundary, but suppose I will uh, say that I am interested to have an open system can I analyze it. I can analyze the same problem with an open system instead of control mass provided I know how to do it ok and it may be little bit cumbersome that means in other words that you can use any of them for your analysis sometimes it will be cumbersome to handle, but however it is one can convert uh, you know both the control mass and control volume system for the same problem that we will be doing when we will be deriving the first law of thermodynamics for a control volume system or open system we will be using the control mass concept and then derive that. So, we will do that later on. So, whenever we are a system is interacting with the surrounding 
right there will be change in the properties of the system and also also the surrounding and therefore we need to look at a properties of a system right and uh, as I told earlier a system contains certain amount of ma matter and to describe a system and predict the change of state right we need to look at properties of the matter is to be noted down right. For example, if I am giving some heat to a piston cylinder arrangement the pressure you know will be changing so also the temperature and then we will be looking at those properties. <coughs> so, what is the property then? Property is basically an observable characteristics of a system that means what you can observe grossly right pressure, temperature you know like uh, all those things. For example, properties of a water can be specified as what? as a colorless, odorless, tasteless right, am I right. Now, can these properties, these properties of water consider as um, thermodynamic properties? Is it possible that we can say look at these are the thermodynamic properties? No, it is basically related to the portable condition of the water but nowadays it is not you see these properties are not good enough to say whether water is portable or not. Now, we are bothered about whether it is a you know uh, like TDS that is the total dissolved um, uh, salt or uh, how much and then what it is biological this thing like battery other things are not there all those things we will have to consider now to make a water portable or not. But these properties uh, you know are not enough good enough for us for us the thermodynamic must be associated with the energy and its transformation or energy and its interaction with the surrounding. So, what are those properties? So, those properties are pressure, temperature, volume, mass, density and several other things right. So, the essential feature of properties are basically definite value at a particular state that means you should have particular values and also the it must be a point function that means it must be independent of the path taken by the system during its interaction with its surrounding it should not really right. So, therefore, one has to be uh, considered that. So, a property at a given state is independent of a path followed by the system right. If I consider this as a path you know like for example, a system is here and it can go to a another point in this right. It can go through this path 1 to A or it can go to A to 2 right. It can go through A to B A uh, from 1 B 2 it can go to A to 2 3 path C but the properties at station 1 will be you know not affected by the path taken. So, also the properties at the 2 it is a, you know does not depend upon what path it has taken. So, then only it will be the property of a system right. And in order to do that mathematically we can say properties P I am just saying symbol using P it can be pressure, it can be temperature, it can be anything <coughs> and let us say there is a system is uh, uh, interacting with surrounding and there will be change in properties right. Let us say the, the pressure is changing right. If I take a closed chamber and then started heating the gas then naturally pressure will increase ok. So, if I say that the change in uh, pressure will be P 2 minus P 1. And if I say the pressure is a function of x and y, I can write it down as that dP is equal to dou P by dou x when y is constant into dx plus dou P by dou y when x is constant into dy is equal to A dx plus B dy. What is A then here? A is nothing but your dou p by dou x when y is equal to constant right and b is equal to dou p by dou y 
when x is constant right. So, now I want to find out P as a property whether it is exact differential or not what I will have to do I will have to use this condition that d p is said to be exact differential only if dou a by dou y when x is constant and equal to dou b by dou x when y is constant right. So, then property is called as a point function and thermodynamic property is a point function not a path function right it does not depend on the path. So, if you look at we will see in the next lecture right uh, how it is it is a mathematically we have told physically we will look at it and we will stop over here thank you.